Welcome to the Rapid Cassandra e-learning course, Section 2, Designing the Data Model. In this section, we'll focus on the tools and techniques available for Cassandra data modeling. Cassandra provides a SQL-like language to manipulate its data model, called Cassandra Query Language, and CQL in short. Here, we'll delve into it. We're going to understand what CQL is about. Then, the supported native data types will be introduced. It's also good for us to browse Cassandra's source code repository at GitHub. Cassandra introduced CQL in release 0.8 as a SQL-like alternative to the traditional Thrift RPC API. The latest CQL version is 3.1.7. The syntax of CQL is designed to be very similar to that of SQL. This intent is good for those of you used to writing SQL statements to migrate to Cassandra. It should be noted that CQL3 is not backward compatible with CQL2 and differs in many ways. CQL3 provides a model very similar to SQL. It uses a table instead of a column family to store data in rows of columns. It offers three main types of statements. Data definition statements to set and change how data is stored in Cassandra. Create key space, use, alter key space, drop key space, create table, and so on. Data manipulation statements to create, delete, and modify data. Insert, update, delete, and batch. Query statements, that is, select to look up data. CQL defines a bunch of keywords. It distinguishes between reserved and non-reserved keywords. Reserved keywords cannot be used as an identifier. They are truly reserved for the language. Non-reserved keywords only have a specific meaning in certain contexts but can be used as identifier. We may refer to these keywords here, but we won't go through each of them now. Cassandra bundles an interactive terminal called CQLSH for us to write CQL statements. Open a terminal. Type CQLSH. The greeting banner shows the Cassandra instance that is now connected, which is test cluster at the moment. Also, the CQLSH version, Cassandra version, CQL version, and Thrift API version. Suppose we want to create a key space called RAPCAS using the simple strategy replication strategy and setting replication factor as 1 for a single node Cassandra cluster. We can type create key space RAPCAS with replication equals class simple strategy replication factor 1. Then use it. Type Use RAPCAS. All right, we created the key space. Apart from the CQL statements to implement a data model, we also need different data types to represent the nature of the data we want to put into Cassandra. CQL3 supports many typical data types for columns, as well as the more advanced collection types. The table here gives a quick reference. Most of the time, we'll use double, float, int, text, timestamp, Time UUID, UUID, and Vercare. Interestingly, a special data type called init is provided to cater for IPv4 and IPv6 IP addresses. As a developer, if we want to find out what these data types are, remember that Cassandra is an open source project. We can go to its GitHub repository to have a peek. The source code is inside the SRC folder. We may go into CQL3. Click on CQL3 type Java. Hey, you see? The native data types are defined here. The Java classes of ASCII type, long type, bytes type, decimal type, and so on are declared in the package org.apache.cassandra.db.marshall. It's worth your time having a glance at it. We've learned the basics of CQL, which offers a SQL-like language to implement a data model and manipulate the data inside. We created a key space using CQLSH. Then we touched on the native data types. We also visited Cassandra's GitHub project to have a peek at the source code of the native data types. In the next video, we'll look into modeling by query.